اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بل نقذف بالحق علی الباطل فید مغف فیذا هو زاہق ولکم الویل مما تصفون صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری وجسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The verse which I have recited is from Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 18. Allah says, بَلْ نَقْزِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ Whenever the truth heard against the falsehood, فَيَدْ مَغْهُ It knocks out its brain. فَيَدْ مَغْهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقُ وَلَكُمُ الْوَيْلُ مِمَّا تَصِفُونَ Whenever the truth heard against the falsehood, it knocks out its brain. The brain has been shaken inside. To who? To who? The one who is on the falsehood. The one who is a liar. You can see his face will be knocked out. The expression will be there. This is what Allah says in the Quran, chapter 21, verse number 18. And indeed, falsehood has to be perished anyways. Today the topic is regarding the boasting and the miracles and all these, you know, gymnastics, the Christian dumb or Christians, they do it, especially the pastors in their conventions about healing, about many other things, etc. to convince people that Jesus Christ is healing or Christianity is the true religion whatsoever. The point in which they make is this, overall. And in remote places in Pakistan, they boast that many Pakistanis, Muslims, are also getting convinced and persuaded through their feats and miracles. And they boast that Jesus is healing them all. You see, let me tell you one thing very clear. Islam is not standing on the grounds of miracles. The only sign and the miracle which Allah has given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, according to Surah Ahqaf, chapter 49, that, O oh Muhammad, peace be upon him, we have given you this book and it's not enough. Is it not enough that we have given you this book and you are unlettered? This is the sign. And those kuffar say that, bring us some miracle, show us some miracle, so we will believe that you are the messenger of God. Why don't you show us the stairs? The stairs start from the earth to the heavens, and then you see that the revelation is coming down, show us like this. Or there is Mount Ahad, the, the mountain of Ahad, change it into gold. <clears throat> These kind of things they were demanding from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So in Surah Ahqaf, in return, Allah replied to them that, Say of Muhammad, peace him, tell them that the miracles are not in my hands. I am just the warner. And what I was all warning about, that repent, straight jacket yourself. And the signs are in the hands of Allah. If he wants to show, he can show it. But you listen. Allah is saying to the kuffar, disbelievers, you listen. Is it not enough for you that we are revealing or we reveal this book to you? O Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is it not enough for them? What is the book? Al-Quran. See the eloquence of Quran. See the rhythm of Quran. The magnitude, the power Quran has in the hearts of people. This Quran, is it not enough we are, we, we are revealing unto you? And you are unlettered, and these Arabs know it. They know you since you are you know in child, since you are child, and you raise in front of them. Is it not enough that we are revealing you or we revealed you with this book, Al Quran, the miracle in eloquence of Arabic language, and no contradiction in Quran whatsoever. No contradiction. So this is not enough. This is the 
sublime introduction of Quran and revealing to Prophet Muhammad So if you want to challenge about the miracle, we have a visual miracle, Al-Quran in front of you. In return, what do you have? Hollywood movies? Those creation of those, you know, miracles which are, which are mentioned in your book and you show to the people, you're going to convince from them. You cannot reproduce those miracles. You can only do it on Hollywood, in Hollywood movies, that's all. But you don't have actual understanding. It's all in the book. You don't have any visual miracle till doomsday. Quran is there. Have a look. Why don't you ponder on this book? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, you would have found therein much discrepancies, much contradiction, not contradistinction, contradiction. Chapter 4, verse 82, Surah An Nisa. Allah says, come and ponder on this book. Why don't you ponder on this book? Add care, with care. Had it been anyone, had it been from anyone other than Allah, other than God, you would have found therein much discrepancy. Discrepancies, if you put on Bible, this is not the subject today, but one of the examples, I'm going to give it today and you will see it. This is my direct messages. The, sorry, this is my direct message to the pastors. And the message is not from me, from Jesus Christ. But before going into that, the clever Christian missionary or the clever pastor who thinks they are the best debaters on earth right now. You see, they say as, when I quote this, when I will quote this, you will see. They say to us, it's written in your hadith that if you eat seven ajwa dates, nothing will come to you, no harm to you. So far, so good. It's written there. You see, first you have to understand that we have Arabic of the hadith. And that hadith which is mentioned is not about the faith, about the test of your faith. It is about a reason and the ingredients in the dates of Ajwa. Due to some ingredients and with the prayer and the blessing of God, it will not the things the devils and shayateen or magic or something, a, a disease or something, a poison will not hurt you or not harm you. But it is not testing providence. It's not that we are we are told or forced to do so. Or where Prophet says that these are the signs of my followers that the whosoever eats ajwa dates, nothing will come to him, no harm will come to him. This is not the case. This is a general hadith. And still it is in the hadith, not in Quran. Not in the word of God. It is the word of Prophet. And words of Prophet are under observation through the science of hadith but still if we take it that hadith does not prove anything it is the matter of your faith it is the matter of your faith you want to do it try it there are thousand things in islam we do it but does not mean that this will happen exactly we have many masnoon duas where prophet say you read it nothing will come to you and nothing till in the morning till in the evening and in case if something happens so what? What are you going to say? That Prophet ﷺ hadith ma'azallah was not correct? No. Because this is what Allah wants. That's it. When Allah wants something, He can bypass. There's no reason for that. That you did you not distrust the hadith. But your case is different. Your God is telling you Jesus is your God. And He is giving you the test. And the test he gave you, so potent, clear, succinct, tersely spoken and equivocal, and equivocal, what is that? He said that these signs, they shall follow. Who? My followers. These signs, they shall follow. Meaning, these are mine if they have these signs. 
Prophet never said like this. Islam never gave test on these kind of reasonings. Islam gave the test on logic. This is Quran. Come, stand to reason. You have all those things in the books. This is the bookish world. We are not in the going into bookish world. We are going into practical world. So, without wasting further time, let's see. Analysis. I clear about the Ajwa dates. If any clever Christian comes to you after this video, tell him clearly. This is not our test of faith. This is not the test that Prophet tell us to do. He did not enforce it. He's not telling it is incumbent on you. It's not, he's not telling that you are forced as a part of your faith. No. It's a general command. And we have thousand ahadiths like that. But your case is very different. Jesus Christ said, Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 9 to 20. Jesus Christ said, especially the last verses, 17, 16, 17, 18, 19. He said it. These signs they shall follow. Who? Who follow? You know who? In today's era, pastors. Pastors in the churches. Especially those born again and TV evangelists or church goers or Bible thumpers, hot gospelers, all are here lumped up in this category. And these signs they shall follow. In my name, they will cast out devils. Many pastors in Pakistan, they do convention. I don't want to take their names. I never like to take their names. They do these things. In the name of Jesus, heal. The guy get healed. In the name of Jesus, something happened. The guy, the guy is deaf. The guy is born blind. He has leprosy. He has many, any kind of disease. He has ALS. He has, you know, this, uh, what you call cerebral palsy. Any disease he has. In the name of Jesus, done. The job is done. You see, I wonder why these uh, pastors don't go to hospitals. They are sick people, dying people, on their deathbed, bedridden people for so long of paralysis. Go to them and heal them in the name of Jesus. No, this drama will only be enacted in the churches. Paid actors, cheap Apologetics and cheap, uh, what you call this old drama, cheap uh, scenes, cheap script, cheap direction, cheap production. That's the best in it. But what Jesus said, these signs they shall follow. In my name, they cast out devils. All of these pastors, they do this thing because it's easy. It costs you nothing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, do it. So far, so good. Continue. The verse continues. In my name they cast out devils. You cast out devils. In, in my name they will heal the people. Heal the people. They will speak many foreign tongues. They will speak many different languages. In my previous talk I told you in Pakistan. Leave about foreign languages. These pastors cannot speak their own mother tongue. Not mother's tongues. Their own mother tongues, the language they learned from childhood. You know that? Vowels. They do not know it is the what word we have to say through the right vowels in Urdu. Addiction, intonation, pronunciation, articulation, dialect. All are gibberish. By God, I'm telling you, meet any of them. I have not come across a single pastor who is so much have DDs and doctors of dignity or whatsoever in Pakistan whose diction is correct in language. What foreign language is you going to speak? Nothing. You watch in Pakistan, they bring translators. Why you need translators in conventions? Jesus said that they will speak many tongues. The who? The whom? Who's who? They're talking about who people? Which people? The people who follow 
signs in them, meaning the who say that we are the follower of Jesus. These signs must be dwelled in them. What is that? I will tell you. Number one, they will heal in my name. They will cast out devils in my name. These two tasks, easy. Everybody does it. Third one, they will speak many foreign tongues. I say, which pastor speaks English in Pakistan? Which pastor speaks? Speak English at least properly, the language of your Bible, the translator slaves you are, the translator of the translation, you use it in your Bible and you talk about Quran. You do, you do blasphemy against Quran, but you are very clever to do blasphemy against Quran, but you never talk on your own. You don't know how to read your own Bible in English. You are the slave of a translation of the translation of the translation. The, the Bible you are carrying in Urdu is basically the vernacular coming from King James Version and same as Revised Standard Version translated into Urdu. This is the thing. So how many languages you speak? Not your own mother tongue properly. Then, here is the problem comes. Jesus says, if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. It will not harm them. It will not hurt them. I say, why pastor don't follow this? Why you have a hypocritical idea that the first part you follow it, in my name they cast devils. You say, look, Jesus gave a sign, we are doing it. But you fail in the second of the tongues. You don't know how to speak different languages. And the third, you never take a deadly poison. Then the smart Christian comes and says that, no, don't tempt God, don't tempt providence. Very clever. Your God gave you this test. If God has given you test, then it's not tempting God. Temptation comes if somebody else gives you the test to do something against Allah, against God, to check him. Like if some clever Muslim or smart Muslim comes and say that, okay, okay, fine, if you want to believe in that, to do this thing and let's see God is protecting you or not. This is tempting. This is tempting providence. But that is not tempting providence because your God gave you this test. When God gave you this test, then it must be fulfilled for the complacency of the people. And if you are not fulfilling it, then it means it's a cheat. It means you are a liar. You are making a lie because Jesus says four things you must do it. And these signs they shall follow in them. You'll see in them. I don't see signs. I only see in the name of Jesus. You are doing this all melodrama. I see that in the what you call might you can speak few languages. I could you can convince me in that point too. But you are failed to convince me to take any deadly thing. You know, there was a debate long time in Scandinavia, in Sweden, Scandinavian countries. Sheikh Ahmad Didar Rahimullah, he did with uh, Stanley Schobert, something like that. I don't know. I forgot the name of that pastor. The guy gave him the poison is there and he was shivering. So his faith, you know, went away with his all these, uh, you know, idiosyncrasy. He ought to fulfill that. But he, you know, the way he sheepishly, he changed the game and changed, turned the table. Look, the drama he enacted and played. Now, you know, I see a devil in him. Why devil in him? When Jesus gave you the test, you didn't say that. I see devil in him. Astaghfirullah in Jesus. But you say that that guy, the one who brings you to do the test, I see devil in him. Very good way out. Fulfill the test. Then show us these conventions in Pakistan. If you show us these four tests, then talk to us and tell us what Jesus said, well, how did Jesus did this and that. You make mockery of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by saying what miracle Prophet Muhammad did. Yes, this is your main idea, but all the Muslims, you, are, you have only this sale point to tell Muslim what miracles Prophet did. Quran is our miracle. Do you have any standing miracle? No. The, teacher, the test Jesus gave you, you do you never fulfill. No pastor ever fulfilled that. Only you take half the test because it gives you donation, money. I always say you. I always say that the best business is to open a church and you watch. Play with the people's emotions. Jesus is coming anytime. Anytime he's coming. 
people get you know worked up in frenzy in ecstasy in euphoria all overwhelming people coming droves after droves to do what nothing all in vain damn squib this is what i'm always telling if you want to reason on the real grounds you have no case i have a solution for you i can help you you see if you read revised standard version of the bible 1948 or 1952 they remove these verses you know that they remove mark chapter 16 verse number 9 to 20 as a fabrication interpolation concoction adulteration they said it on in original ancient manuscripts we do not find these verses these are assumed to jesus christ these are put to jesus christ he never uttered those words i said congratulations you christians you pastor you should listen revised standard version it will protect you from this test the test and acid test jesus gave you please that is why we're telling you bible is not the word is not the god's word the word of god if it was so one jot and one tittle shall no means pass away from the law until all be fulfilled jesus christ said till the heavens and the earth shall pass away one jot one you know speck should not be changed from the law until all be fulfilled whosoever removes your new testament says paul book of corinthians whosoever removes or whosoever adds or subtracts anything from the word of god plague be upon unto them so what's are you doing you removed it 9 to 20 mark chapter 16 and then you said that is still the word of god some vegetarians of tapsis you said it's the footnote of that guy which came into the text so when it came into the text then remove it and you removed it same one epistle of john chapter 5 verse 7 removed luke chapter 24 verse 51 removed all these things are removed in your bible and then restored back again all these things think if you say no those pastors were shoe makers those you know 50 cooperating denominations were shoe makers those people who did this revised standard version the editors then please fulfill mark chapter 16 verse 9 to 20 your game will up wa khidu da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin